worlds within worlds. His name was Archer, and he thought he was an ordinary man. The collectors of Panorama Eggs knew better, for Archer was such a collector, and there was a very special find awaiting him, the Panorama Egg that contained a world. He was guided in the use of that incredible masterwork by the enigmatic gray woman Mira Melaklos, but her real name could have been something else beyond this space-time continuum. For indeed, Archer and the Grey Woman crossed into a world that was not Earth, found they had special roles to play in a land where alternate science reigned, and a mission of heroism was the price of existence. The Panorama Egg is a novel of strange enchantment and mystery, and of a man who wanted and found an end to a humdrum 20th century existence. So... A few weeks ago, I bought a dozen eggs at the farmer's market, and that night I thought I'd have an omelet. I planned to add asparagus, mushrooms, and some goat cheese, but I didn't have time that night to make the omelet, which turned out to be very lucky. In the morning, when I thought to boil some of the eggs, I found that something had hatched, or actually I wasn't sure. I found a broken eggshell, but nothing else. I didn't know which was more disturbing to consider, either that something had hatched and somehow escaped the refrigerator, or something had gotten into the refrigerator and eaten the egg. At this point now, I can say I know for certain that the former occurred, something hatched, and it must have been hiding in the refrigerator when I first opened the door that morning, maybe hiding behind the milk carton. It probably crawled or ran out then or later when I looked again with my daughter to see by her reaction if she was pulling a prank on me, which, by the way, would not have been her style. I know that something hatched because I encountered it later in the bathroom where I spotted it hanging upside down from the ceiling after I took a shower. It looked like a frilled lizard, sort of, standing upright, but like I said, upside down. I think it was attracted to the heat and the moisture. It had already grown longer than my hand. Although it looked like a lizard, it was obviously intelligent. I could tell by its hisses and gackles and frantic gestures that it was very alarmed by my appearance. So I did everything possible to allay its fears, mostly by making a kind of rapid sound that caused it to blink rapidly. It grew to trust me. It also grew ridiculously fast, apparently by synthesizing humidity, and as it grew, it moved less and less. Finally, it stopped moving entirely as it sent out tendrils from its feet which anchored it to my bathroom ceiling. It had become a plant for all intents and purposes, uh, like an upside-down succulent or something like that. I have been waiting for signs of a further change. It looks less and less like a lizard each day and more and more just like a plant. I still talk to it, but it hasn't answered back for several days. I'm worried about it, but what can I do? It's about three feet long, hanging from the ceiling, and almost blocks the bathroom door. I hope it's metamorphosizing, like a butterfly in a cocoon, although I'm also kind of worried about what might emerge. I suppose all I can do now is wait. Every day, though, I do take an extra hot shower, and I stand beside the plant saying the only words I know to say. 